Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, 2006 Chevy HHR 2.4 LT. Um, it's the stalling out of issue part two. Um, some of y'all have probably wanted to know exactly why this vehicle kept stalling out of issue. I had a, a, uh, another video about eight, nine months ago that was posted about did you solve the problem? <clears throat> And actually, I did. Um, come to find out on this vehicle, on the first video, it was stalling out of issue. And it was also causing the uh, anti-theft lights and all the gauges to go haywire. And it was causing the car to stall while I was driving. It was causing very, very poor acceleration. And um, come to find out, it uh, this right here, this cover, is where the computer is. What I hate is, is that GM did not make like an actual full cover that goes all the way down. It only covers the top and the side, which I think is a really poor design. And all it is is a piece of plastic. And here's your computer. Just if y'all were wondering, this is the transmission control module right beside the ECU. Um, the ECU was dirty and it did have brown liquid in it only in the gray port and come to find out the, as far as what I was studying on, um, I'm assuming the uh, gray port was for the ignition and for most of with some of the electrical. I think it was more for the ignition because when I checked the gray port, there was brownish liquid. And I thought, like I said in the first video, I thought there was oil or cooling in it. And come to find out this whole area here was dry. The whole harness was dry besides on the bottom of the connector, but there was nothing on the end of the connectors, on the wire, on the plastic housing that covers the wires, and there was none all over the ECU or, or, or uh, all over the transmission control module, and this was all completely dry, so I'm assuming it had to be water. Um, come to find out, I thought it, I thought it might have been my oil pressure switch because it was leaking at the time but but me remembering that this the oil pressure switch was never leaking because it was replaced before uh this before this whole ecu thing happened because it, it was completely dry it was brand new it was sealed and it was tightened and um that was all cleaned up as well i thought maybe oil might have been leaking from the cam again it was all replaced and it was all dry and as you tell the engine's really clean by looking at it um so i take really really good care of it so come to find out what it was is when i was pressure washing my car one time and um now once in a blue moon i'll do i don't do it all the time maybe do it once a year um there's a possible chance that water might have got in through here and um there's a possible chance it could have just leaked all over probably got in here and got in between the crease of the connector and the ecu and that is possible. Um, so that might have would have called the brownish liquid. I mean, I'm not saying it couldn't have been any other type of liquid. Um, but by looking at all the hoses and everything, it, there was no issues as far as any wet or any type of coating of any signs of any water or any cooling or oil anywhere. So just keep in mind that if you do degrease your engine and use a pressure washer or if you use a water hose even with this thing the water can still bypass and it can still get in here to wet all this most of the time you're supposed to have one of those one of those plastic covers that goes over the engine that keeps the engine from getting all that degreaser on it, on it 100% because some degreaser can actually destroy like the hoses and they can destroy start things on the car if it's not washed immediately but it also keeps from water getting to places it shouldn't they usually say you can use a pressure washer on a car or on a motor you just don't want to put a crap load on it but if you think you had water in your ecu due to pressure washer or from a water hose clean your motor off from a from like old oil leaks or some old antifreeze your engine's just very dirty yeah, that could be the problem. I would recommend putting a bag or something over this and keep it covered so it doesn't get into the ECU. And when it comes to the relay box, it seems to be completely sealed because I never had any problems there. So 
I didn't check it since, but I haven't been having any of the symptoms with it stalling anymore with any of the anti-theft or the electrical problems. But like I did say in the first video, when I went to try to connect this back on, the connector broke. This piece did and it went locked back on. Then the car would not crank at all unless you hold it really tight, put pressure on it. The car would crank as soon as you let it go, it would stall. Cause that was, I think that was something to do with the ignition with that gray part. I'm not saying that I am, I'm not saying that it was. I'm not a professional when it comes to the ECU's electric uh, diagnostics and how it runs. But the way it sounds that it controls the, the controls the whole ignition system. Um, but what you should do is when you, if it is wet, let it dry out in the sun or somewhere where it's hot for at least eight hours. But I would probably recommend 24 if you have a second vehicle. If you don't, let it dry in the direct sunlight for at least eight hours. But lean, let it be upside down. Don't let it lay up with the ports facing the sky because you don't want the water getting more into the um, the actual system and causing corrosion of any kind. Um, now you can also use electrical cleaner in it. But if you use electrical cleaner, make sure the ports are upside down like this when you're spraying it so you don't flood the whole entire system. That's what I did and it worked fine. I haven't had any problems since. But like I said, when this thing broke, I had to replace the whole engine harness because I wasn't just gonna buy this piece and just rig all the wires. It's afraid it's gonna have any problems. It was just cheaper and a lot easier just to replace the whole harness just to get that to work right. I mean, for 44 bucks and a pull of junk card, you can't go wrong. So if you wanna put something underneath this, to keep it from keep from water and getting in there you can but i can't guarantee if the ecu is going to overheat due to uh sorry due to blockage because I, I don't know if the ecu gets a little hot and might need uh, air to breathe but just so you know the, the issue was solved it was liquid in the computer that caused all that mayhem and then we're going to tell you again when liquid gets in your computer for one it can cause stalling and acceleration issues too. It can cause the anti-left light, light to come on and not go out. And you're able still you're able to still drive the vehicle, and you're able you just won't be able to go very very fast. Three, it can cause your speedometer gauge, uh, your RPMs gauge to go haywire, jump up and down really really fast. And four, it can cause it not to crank. But please be careful when you do take the the connectors off. I'm hoping yours is not dry rotted and it doesn't break. And if it doesn't, then you're lucky. I've never had that happen before until I bought one of these. So there's a usually over time, if they've never been taken off, they do dry out due to heat and weather. And they can also, and let me show you, these connectors can actually break. They pull that way. But if they're really, really stiff and the other ones come off easy, then that tells me that you have a bad one because three, two of these came off and the other one didn't want to budge to pull back. So once it pulled back, it made a really loud snapping noise. And that's how I know it broke because this thing was really loose and it wasn't tight. And that's how you know you got a bad connector and you have to replace the whole harness. You can't buy these by themselves. You got to buy the whole harness. That's the point. Um, but yeah, I hope this video helps on the stalling out issue on the 2006 Chevy HHR with the 2.4 LT. This can also be concerning for the 2.2s as well, since they're the same engines. Cannot guarantee this will work well for the uh, Chevy Cobalt or the Saturn Vs, but that's one thing you can check out as well, because since they use the, the, the same engines. Um, please subscribe to my channel and y'all have a great one.